Hello! I'm Heeman Gaiman, and I have a very startling announcement, and that's that I like video games. I, I, I know! I know you're shocked, mortified, appalled, and probably 90, 95% of you probably, probably just fainted. I, I'm sorry that you had to find out like this, but I'm going to continue. Uh, hopefully, once you wake up, you'll return at this point in the video, and we'll be able to continue. So as I said, I like video games. I like lots of video games, like uh, strategy games, RPGs, first-person shooters, and one that you might not have guessed, tower defense games. I love and adore tower defense games. I think they are like the, one of the funnest genres. And while I haven't played every single tower defense game, I've probably played at least 50, enough to, you know, know most of the big names, and I have to say without a doubt, the best one is Bloom's Tower Defense 5. Now, I, I have the app, and I have sunk in a staggering amount of time. As of recording this, I have popped over 73 million balloons. <clears throat> um, and that's not even including the fact that my phone was wiped, and the ones that I popped on the online game. So, with all the time I've played, I've noticed which towers kind of are better, and which ones are worse. So, I'm going to go ahead and tell you my top 9 towers in Bloom's Tower Defense 5. Roll that title card. Hello, YouTube, and welcome to He Games Top 9 Towers in Bloom's Tower Defense 5. An opinion piece. For this list, I'm going to name 9 towers that, with combination of their final building upgrade, can pass a medium stage using only that tower, and maybe one or two helpers. So let's go! Before you get building upgrades, this is one of the most useful towers. With the proper allocation of money to this thing, it goes from being a powerful tower to an incredibly powerful tower. Although bombs can't pop black balloons, the frag upgrade easily tear through all of the defenses. Once you make it so that a balloon can get hit 17 times with bombs, it's over. They don't stand a chance. The only thing that would be able to break through this line of bombs is a blimp. But these towers have an upgrade that allows them to do 10 times damage to blimps, which will cause all blimps to get shredded as well. So why so low? Well, camouflage. For all the bomb tower's explosive ferocity, it can't see cloaked blooms. If you get a monkey beacon, it might be a little better, but the level that I captured the footage for, I simply gave it a wizard tower. Now, while not the most conventional tower, it's certainly the funnest. Simply place these towers near the exit, sit back and relax. Go ahead and throw one near the mouth of the stage that puts down blimp shredding spikes and you'll have smooth sailing until stage 63. The first little part will hit you hard and fast before you can even react to it. But if you use a simple monkey storm on the first group of ceramics, the spike towers can set up enough to easily get through the second and third waves of stage 63 with ease. Now, unlike the bomb tower, this has it all. Camo detection, bombs, high fire rate. What else do you need? Water. For everything the monkey buccaneer can do, it is useless if you don't have any water for it. I mean, on watery levels, knock yourself out. Show the balloons the ferocity of the sea. Hello, Bloom. Let me ask ya. Do you fear death? Now, the boomerang on its own is a dang great tower that I often could do pretty well with and pass most of the time, but its upgrade building makes it too powerful. At first, it makes the boomerang take one extra rotation around the monkey, and its second ability makes it throw two boomerangs at once. A tower that could pass my test on its own made six times more powerful for free? Huh. It only takes $120 to get lead piercing, but you'll need some help until you can squirrel over $8,000 for the upgrade to take down camos. But once you get that, the six times more powerful boomerang monkey will easily defeat any balloons that come its way. Once again, another tower that on its own can shred its foes into mincemeat. Its upgrades allow it to throw five shurikens that can seek out and pop four each. 
twice per second. So, uh, 40 pops per second is pretty freaking good. You just get one or two ninjas that can throw stun bombs to handle the lead balloons, and you're golden. Honestly, the upgrade building is needless for this tower to be godlike. The final tower that can really be a force of nature without the upgrades from the building. Spells that shred through lead and a cheap way to detect camos make the wizard great, but you give him an explosion fireball, a lightning bolt that strikes up to 10 other balloons, a stream of fire that attacks as fast as a super monkey, and a hurricane that sends anything caught in it back to its home? This tower has got enough to stand on its own. And while they are nice, the triple hurricane and heat seeking bolt are essentially useless. Now here is where the towers get crazy! The pilot's ability gained from the ace pilot hangar is, is just something else. Level 3 is a front firing gun. The monkey buccaneer has an ability for $11,000 that gives the monkey pilots front firing guns. At level 4, you get to fire in all directions. So with this ability activated, you get something better than $11,000 for free! Just throw three planes down with this ability and send them on three separate flight patterns and nothing can get past you. A higher firing rate than a super monkey. Firing bonds. Anywhere on the map! You know how I said that stage 63 is the hardest stage? Look at what two specters do to level 63. Unbelievable! Unbelievable! willing to argue that number two is actually the best tower in the game, but it has one drawback. It needs water. The sub, after just two upgrades, gains the ability to shoot anywhere on screen. After going the other route, it gains the ability to put a bomb that does bonus damage to ceramics and blimps anywhere on the screen. Put a ton of them around this castle, which is an expert stage, on the hard difficulty this game is still a breeze. The Sub is another tower that you can single-handedly pass levels easily with. But number one is a building that makes the hardest stage into a cakewalk as well, but with the added benefit of being able to be placed anywhere. TF2 inspired engineers are a pretty solid tower once you let it build its sentries, but for some reason, someone at Ninja Kiwi looked at the sentries and said, okay, I like what's going on here, but I think it needs the ability to instantly destroy foes from any distance. The super sentry suits fast, far, and hard. It is certainly not worth the $470 to have three of them mobilized, but that's the harsh reality of the situation. I mean, look, look at what it's doing to one of the hardest stages in the game. Combine that with the tower ability that traps balloons and then sells them for more than they're worth, I beat one of the hardest stages in the game with 41,000 leftover money. You don't beat stages in the game with 41,000 leftover money, let alone one of the hardest stages in the game. If you want to beat harder levels of Bloom's Tower Defense, just upgrade the engineer building and go to town. So there you have it, Heating Gun's Top 9 Towers of Bloom's Tower Defense 5. As I said, I, can't, I cannot recommend this game enough. I have spent so much time on it. Easily the best $4 I have ever spent on any app. Uh, if you have an iPhone, I cannot urge you strongly enough to pick it up. I mean, it came out in 2011 and they're still coming up with free updates and stages and, and just tons of stuff. But if you want to play the game for free or you don't have an iPhone, you filthy unwashed masses, go on over to Ninja Kiwi, no, go head on over to Ninja Kiwi and play the game. Have a jolly old time. Fairly well. Roll that title card. Roll it, Scott. Boom! Chicka wow wow! Chicka wow wow! Boom! Chicka wow wow! Yeah! You know what?
that's going. 